Are you sure it's just sweat? Untimely urgency? Persistent pelvic pain? Laughing causing leaking? Prefer past performance? Frustrated with frequency? Dream of dry sheets? Tailbone trouble? Pads too pricey? Pressured by heaviness? Constipation concerns? If any of these apply to you, then your pelvic floor muscles may well be the reason. Millions of men, women, and children are affected by a pelvic floor disorder. This can affect people in many ways and frequently includes feelings of hopelessness, embarrassment, frustration, and fear. But there is hope. You can laugh without leaking, leave pain behind, and love better sleep. Let's learn where the pelvic floor muscles are located. The pelvic floor muscles are a group of muscles at the base of the pelvis that function like a hammock. This hammock of muscles supports three organs in females, the bladder, the uterus, and the rectum. In this right side view of a female, you can see the pubic bone in the front and the tailbone in the back. The pelvic floor muscles connect to the pubic bone in the front and stretch across the pelvis to attach to the tailbone in the back. The bladder sits behind the pubic bone, the uterus is behind the bladder, and the rectum is located at the back. Each of these pelvic organs has a canal that exits the body. The bladder connects to the urethral canal. This is where urine exits the body. The uterus connects to the vaginal canal. This canal is used for sex and childbirth. The rectum connects to the anal canal. This is where solid waste and gas exit the body. Here is another view of the pelvic floor muscles from the side. Notice how the muscles wrap around each of the canals. The anatomy of the male pelvic floor is very similar to that of a female. The surface layer of the male pelvic floor muscles wrap around the lower one-third of the shaft. In this right side view of a male, you can see the pubic bone in the front and the tailbone in the back. This is the bladder and this is the rectum. The prostate sits right under the bladder and wraps around the urethral exit canal. Now here is the female side view again. Notice how the muscles look as they close, lift, and contract. Here the muscles look different as they open and relax. Let's learn what the pelvic floor muscles do. Here are four of the ways the pelvic floor functions in the body. The first function is support. The pelvic floor muscles support the pelvic organs and hold them up. These muscles are literally the floor of the pelvis. If the pelvic floor muscles become weakened and strained, the organs can start to fall. The forces from below must equal or exceed the forces from above or the organs will start falling. Pelvic organ prolapse is the descent or falling of the pelvic organs into or through one of the exit canals of the body. Up to 50% of women are affected by pelvic organ prolapse, and of those that have surgery to lift their organs, up to 30% may require re-operation. The second function of the pelvic floor muscles is sphincteric, which means to squeeze or to close off the outlets. The pelvic floor muscles securely wrap around the exit canals to squeeze them tightly closed to keep urine and waste matter inside the body. The pelvic floor muscles also need to be able to relax and let go. This will allow urine and solid waste to exit the body. Let's compare the bladder to a water balloon. As the balloon fills, it should be able to expand and hold the fluid until a decision is made to empty it. If the water balloon outlet isn't closed all the way, leaking will occur. The same thing can happen to the bladder and rectum. If the pelvic floor muscles lack strength or coordination to close off the exit canals, 
leaking of urine, solid waste, and gas can occur. Leakage does not just affect people as they age. Even young people can have unexpected and embarrassing leakage during the daytime or at night. Leakage is not considered normal and is a symptom of underlying issues. Urinary or solid waste leakage affects over 25% of U.S. adults. Pelvic floor muscles that are shortened or won't relax can cause other concerns such as pain during bathroom visits, pain with sitting, and pain during sex. Constipation, difficult urination, and frequent bladder infections can also indicate the presence of the pelvic floor disorder. The third function of the pelvic floor muscles is sexual satisfaction for females and males. Over 40% of women and over 30% of men have some type of sexual dysfunction. Stability is the fourth and final function of the pelvic floor muscles. The body's core functions like an internal girdle to keep everything on the inside strong, stable, and secure. The core is made up of four muscle groups. In front are the deep abdominal muscles, in the back, the deep low back muscles. On top is the diaphragm, which is the primary breathing muscle, and at the bottom are the pelvic floor muscles. These four muscle groups need to work together to provide stability for the back, pelvis, hips, and pelvic organs. If there is weakness in any of these muscle groups, pain or too much movement can occur in the back, pelvis, hips, and pelvic organs. People with urinary leakage are twice as likely to have low back pain as those without leakage. Let's learn how the pelvic floor muscles work. The pelvic floor muscles are voluntary, which means they should do what they are told to do. Just like a hand, pelvic floor muscles can be directed to squeeze and hold, and also to relax and let go. And just like other muscles, pelvic floor muscles can be trained and strengthened. You should be able to isolate and squeeze these muscles without anyone knowing, targeting to hold for 10 seconds, 10 times in a row, without losing strength. You should also be able to squeeze these muscles without holding your breath, or without squeezing your bottom or tummy muscles, or without curling your toes. Imagine that you're in an elevator full of people and you don't want to pass gas. You should be able to keep from passing gas by squeezing your pelvic floor muscles. Due to weakness and incoordination, many people perform pelvic floor muscle contractions incorrectly and they would benefit from training by a pelvic floor physical therapist. Pelvic floor physical therapists may apply the same interventions used in other areas of the body to the pelvic floor muscles and surrounding structures. Pelvic floor physical therapy uses specialized techniques to retrain the pelvic floor muscles to squeeze, hold, let go, be active at the right times, and relax at the right times. One very helpful intervention used is a type of biofeedback called surface EMG. EMG is very similar to an EKG of the heart. The electrocardiogram, or EKG, reads the electrical activity of your heart. The electromyogram, or EMG, reads the electrical activity of your muscles. EMG uses easy-to-place surface electrodes that help the pelvic floor physical therapists determine exactly what the muscles are doing. When the pelvic floor muscles are squeezed, the graph should go up, and when the muscles are relaxed, the graph should go down. Manual therapy is another very effective intervention used by pelvic floor physical therapists. During manual therapy, your therapist uses hands-on techniques to improve movement and decrease pain in your joints, muscles, and soft tissue. 
pelvic floor therapy is the number one recommended intervention for most pelvic floor disorders and has helped countless numbers of people reclaim their lives. Pelvic floor physical therapy also saves money and natural resources by reducing or eliminating the need for costly pads, medications, and surgeries. Are you ready to laugh without leaking, leave pain behind, and love better sleep? The heart of my PFM is passionately promoting pelvic floor health, awareness, and resources for all men, women, and children. Thank you for joining us. For more information on any of the topics covered, please visit our website, mypfm.com or email us directly at hope at mypfm.com.